talk about fraudulent misrepresentation. I'm going to link the article in the description box down below. How do you prove fraudulent misrepresentation? Why am I bringing this topic up? Well, one, um, I'm going to show a video. I have to pause and load it first, but I'm going to show a video of what I feel is negligent on paparazzi's part. I feel it is fraudulent misrepresentation on paparazzi's part. And I feel that it is deceptive acts and practices on paparazzi's part. So, yeah, you guys, we're going to have some fun today. So, <clears throat> proving fraudulent misrepresentation. Your case will need to include substantial evidence of what happened before you were entered into a contract, showing each of the above points where the defendant genuinely believed the statement they made was true. They will have to defense, have a defense to the fraud. Although they may still have misrepresented the situation to you, even if there is a valid defense to negligent misrepresentation, you could have a claim for negligent misrepresentation or innocent misrepresentation. I feel this is negligent and fraudulent. Okay. Um, examples of fraudulent misrepresentation include selling something that is faulty and claiming that it is in good working order or providing falsified inaccurate documents such as annual accounts before entering into a business deal. The misrepresentation can be a verbal or written or could be, take place in emails, advertising content, discussions, promotions, or exaggerated claims. It can be implied, provided that reasonable person would have drawn a similar inference from the words or conduct. So, I had a very trusted friend, extremely trusted friend, uh, Kit Snatch. She Kit Snatched. She went in to see what the uh, Choose Your Own Starter Kit entailed. And the other reason this trusted friend signed up to be a Kit Snatcher is so I could get uh, the enrollment paperwork or the new enrollee stuff in the starter kit. She did it so I could see if they're still advertising the product as lead and nickel free in the starter kit. That will be in a future video, by the way. But when this friend kit snatched uh, and went to sign up for paparazzi, she went through to get her own starter kit. She and I did this together and we recorded the screen. I'm going to pull that up now, so give me a moment. All right, here is the screen that we recorded. Notice that we've already put in and set everything up. We've already put in our credit card information. Now we're on the enrollment terms and conditions. Here we go. We have to read the enrollment terms and conditions. Okay. So we click on policy and procedures right here. We're clicking on it. We're clicking on it. That's what popped up. So we scroll up to the next hyperlink. We click on it. That's what popped up. Then we click on another link and it continues. Every time we go to read the policies and procedures, we can't. All right? We can't read the policies and procedures. So, how can we agree to the policies and procedures if we can't read them? You know, um, they give you that whole box, and then they have the little box down below that says, I agree to the enrollment terms and conditions as presented here. And there's a little asterisk on there. Uh, I don't know what the asterisk is for because it doesn't give you a link to what that asterisk next to it says. I agree to the enrollment terms and conditions. Well, that's interesting. How can you agree to something if you can't read it? So I implore you, uh, paparazzi, 
how do you how do you agree to something if you can't read it? Because here the file or directory not found. You guys just saw the screen recording of when we did this whole enroll in the starter kit thing. The link to sign up for Pavarazzi Jewelry and Accessories to read the policies and procedures is invalid. Okay, so if you want to read these, they'll send you an email after they have your money. Yeah, they'll send you an email after. After they have your money and you've agreed, after you have agreed to these terms and conditions and these policy and procedures, it's only after the fact. It's only after the fact that you get access to this. Okay, so I'm going to star this and I'm going to name it Paparazzi Hyperlink because that's a problem in my humble opinion. You should know what the policies and procedures are before you agree to anything. Okay, that's like contract law 101. There has to be a meeting of the, the minds. So how do you deal with a fraudulent misrepresentation? Well, one, you have to gather your irrefutable evidence. Then you have to reach out to the party and ask to void the contract. By reaching out to the party and asking to void the contract. Um, and you can cite your, your, your evidence then if they decide that no, the contract's not voidable, then you can dispute said charges with your bank, which is what I've advised my trusted friend to do. I have advised her that because she was under duress, that she couldn't get past that screen unless she agreed to policies and procedures that she couldn't read because they were in a hyperlink that was invalid or not available anymore. So, hmm, yeah, it's a little suspect. So not only is paparazzi not giving you um, the income disclosure statement for the year 2022, right here, not only are they not giving you an updated income disclosure statement, but when you go to sign up for this company, you don't even get access you don't even get access to your policy and procedures. And the other thing that upset my friend is she wanted to get a couple of things when she picked her starter kit. She wanted to get something from the last chance category. So she wanted to get something in her starter kit that was in the last chance category. But she couldn't select anything from the last chance category. So if you are thinking, hey, um, you can sign up and you can pick your starter kit, you can pick your starter kit from anything but the last chance category. So that's a little unfair too. And she was upset about that. So um, I don't know if there's truth in advertising on this or not, but... If you agree to be an independent consultant, um, it says right here, independent consultant agreement. The independent consultant agreement compromises the following items. Formal agreement to such an independent consultant agreement or any action representing paparazzi as an independent consultant. Through the purchase of product at wholesale price, participa participation of the compensation plan, or lack thereof, or the retail of any paparazzi product constitutes an agreement to abide by the following articles. The independent consultant agreement, the policies and procedures, and the compensation plan. Well, I don't know how I can uh, be held to the policies and procedures if I was signing up today. If I was signing up to be an independent consultant today, I don't know how I could legally be held to the policies and procedures that I wasn't able to read and understand before agreeing to become a consultant. Okay? 
So I don't know how this is a legal thing. I don't know how this could be legal. I'm not an expert. I'm not an attorney. I'm just pointing out that this is a little suspect. Okay? If, if you're going to enter into a contract of any, any kind, you need to have a meeting of the minds. There needs to be consideration and a whole bunch of other things. So I'm just going to type this in contract law and el contract elements. I can't type. What are the elements of a consideration for a contract? Okay, consideration, a promise, promise that you can make money working from home, look, job searching, love jewelry, work from home as an independent paparazzi consultant, no catalogs, no sales pitches, just fun, fashionable, $5 accessories. Okay, uh, performance, well, paparazzi agrees to have jewelry sold to you at the wholesale price of $2.75. And if you recruit a team, you get paid bonuses based on your performance, and that's their promise to you through the compensation plan that they say in the policy and procedures right here. You know, the compensation plan is part of the agreement. All righty then. Um, a forbearance bargained by a promiser in exchange for their promise Consideration is the main element of the contract. Okay, so what is consideration? Let's pull up the legal definition of that. Okay, here we go. Consideration is a promise, performance, or forbearance bargained by a promise or in exchange for a promise. Consideration is the main element of a contract. Without consideration by both parties, a contract cannot be enforceable. For instance, if a person used the money to purchase an apple and the apple is a merchant's consideration, the money is the person's consideration. So somebody uses money to buy a business in a box because that's what you're told by all the elites. You're buying a business in a box, a business opportunity, an opportunity. So you're buying an opportunity. With that opportunity comes terms and conditions and policies and procedures, okay? If you are not able to review all of the items in exchange for your money, how is that contract enforceable? Because you don't get access to all of that information until you get your money, paparazzi gets their money. It's, a, it's bad faith. It's unfair dealings. It's deceptive acts and practices. I'm just putting I'm just putting this out there. This is my this is my thoughts on the process. Okay? Like I've said, this is my opinion, these are my thoughts. This is what I think. You know, and this is how I think. So, if I if I joined Paparazzi Jewelry and Accessories, and I gave my money in exchange for a business opportunity, and I can't read the policies and procedures in full before giving my credit card information off my consideration, my money. I can't get all the information before I give consideration to the contract. How is this legally binding? And if this has been a failed hyperlink for God knows how long, how many paparazzi consultants out there can be legally held to the policies and procedures? Because this is my humble opinion again. Uh, it, I think it voids a contract. I think you cannot be held to policies and procedures that you were unable to read and understand before giving your consideration to the contract. Okay, you don't get a due diligence period where you can back out of the contract. Y you just don't. I'm like, you just don't. It's, it's a little, it's a little suspect to me. Okay, so if I were a paparazzi consultant, I would reference everybody to this video. Okay. I would reference everyone to this video and I would let them say, hey, look, here's, here's the sign up process. Yeah, when I went to sign up, I tried to read the policy and procedures too. I couldn't do it until after I signed up. 
And after I signed up, I got an email saying, here's your consultant ID. Use the password you created when you signed up. By the way, welcome. Here's your, here's your login, your quick start guide. Here's your access to the policy and procedures. Again, this is an email. Sign up for Fashion Fix. Again, my friend sent all of this to me after she had done this. Because I just, I honestly just wanted the little white booklet thing that came in the starter kit to see if they were still advertising the stuff as lead and nickel free. I just wanted that. But when she told me this, when she showed me this, poof, mind blown, you guys. Mind absolutely blown. That, you know, here, here you go. Welcome to the team. Congratulations. Welcome to the paparazzi party. Blah, 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 blah. You can go to your back office and pull the resources and blah, 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 blah. But that's the thing. That is the thing, you guys. Um, anyone who signed up to be a consultant within the last month, maybe two months, maybe since the dawn of time, um, the link to the policy and procedures, it's an invalid link. You get a 404 error. You get a server error. So you can't enter into a contract unless you have a meeting of the minds. So here's the purpose of the policies and procedures. The purpose of this agreement and the policy and procedures is to define the relationship between an independent consultant and other independent consultants and other company clearly to articulate the expected behavior and acceptable businesses conduct of all parties involved. By agreeing to the independent consultant agreement and its components, the independent consultant is required to comply with all of its components as well as within federal, state, and local laws. If there are any questions in relation to the independent consultant agreement, all independent consultants have their sponsor and their paparazzi support staff available to them for assistance. Changes to the agreement. Paparazzi reserves the right to amend the agreement of its components at any time. Again. Wh what? This, this is just gross. So. I'm pre-recording this video. I'm not putting this video out until everything is finalized and the cancellation is done, but it will be made public. I'm going to end this video with this one thing. Shame on you, paparazzi. You're holding people to a contract that they can't legally agree to. It's fraudulent misrepresentation. It's negligent on your part. It's bad faith and unfair dealings. Fix your shit, paparazzi. This is honestly easy stuff to fix. So get your paparazzi dorks on it and make sure they fix that fucking thing. Because I have the proof. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye.